Shok Chaplin from the Pacific Institute and CEO of Water Mandate. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I am Ashok Chapakai, Senior Researcher, Pacific Institute, and Senior Advisor, CEO of Water Mandate. Uh, today, I'm going to present you the Water Resilience Assessment Framework and how it can help us for our climate resilience was for work program. Uh, in, in a short presentation, that's about 10 minutes. Uh, you might stop me anytime if you like and ask questions. Uh, I would like to give you an overview of the program itself, where we stand with respect to the program and what are the things that we are doing right now and how it can help support the other works now shared presented. So let me share my screen. Uh, let's see if it works. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Yeah, we, we see it. It's uh, it's not yet in presentation mode, but we yeah, see the presentation. I will do it now. Cool. So can, can I see it now? Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Ashok. So the, the, the project is supported by a multi-stakeholder engagement process. It started in 2020. We published the main framework, Water Resilience Assessment Framework in 2021. And we published a guidance document for business sector, and we're developing two more guidance documents for utilities and river basin authorities. Uh, where we stand with respect to the project is the, the guidance documents are published, and then there are some guidance doc document in pipeline, and we are piloting the project. So this is quite exciting. Uh, the, the guidance document for corporate audience is just um, in the piloting phase. So it's a great opportunity for us to kind of uh, align and join forces. And we are collaborating with a number of initiatives like Climate Resident Watch Framework, AWS Standard, Scott is here, uh, risk management tools and practices. So I wouldn't say a lot about the framework itself because I have given the presentation a long time ago. Uh, if you have any further question about the framework itself, I can go through that. But in a nutshell, how we define resilience is, is a system's ability to persist and to, to remain in the current normal state or maintaining function under other disturbances but also ability to adapt and transform. So it's not only about persistence, it's also adaptation and transformation. Uh, where we provide a bit more clarity is the existing risk framework can identify incremental predictable climate impacts, rapid design to work with risk assessment and reduction frameworks such that uh, it integrates global lessons uh, while uncertainty and system resilience, building system resilience the RAP supports stakeholder to build dynamic water and climate resilience that matches our dynamic world. So when the goals are changing, uh, RAP would help you to, to navigate that, those changes. Uh, I wouldn't go through the, the further definitions here. Uh, I'll just quickly give you an overview of the steps. This is necessary because then I can show where we align with respect to the other work. There are four key steps in RAP. The first step is about, about visualizing the system. Uh, whereby you understand the system boundaries, what, what are the drivers, what are the system challenges, what are the shocks and stresses, and identify whether these challenges are increasing or deteriorating or kind of uh, different trends. So that's all visualization of the system. In step two, we develop a certain strategy to develop resilience. It could be around uh, persistence, it could be around adaptation or transformation, or could be hybrid of any one of them. Uh, what we mean by developing a, a strategy is about understanding uh, what character of the system you want to strengthen. For example, you may want to be robust in the face of climate change, or you may want to be flexible enough in the face of climate change. Uh, those are the different six characteristics, which I highlight in the next, in next slide. Uh, those uh, characteristics are the resilience characteristics. So those characteristics are strengthened uh, with the help of resilience action, meaning that if you are weaker with respect to one characteristics, you would develop certain resilience action, certain set of activities that would strengthen the, the, that particular characteristics. Uh, but how do you measure that? Uh, to measure that, like Wendy presented, Wendy Larson bit earlier presented about indicators, it quite aligns with those kind of thinking. I mean, I, I'm quite excited to see a number of indicators quite aligning with, with both the frameworks. Uh, I see that indicators um, in resilience section are quite matching with them as well. Uh, when, when you know the indicators, which indicator uh, to use to measure what kind of characteristics you, you want to choose. So your prioritization of the characteristics, your strategy are measured using these indicators. I will present some examples of these indicators in the slides, in the following slides. So once you know your indicators or characteristics, you can see where you stand currently. What is your current state of residence? 
uh, and then with some resilience action in step three, you would check again uh, what would be the likely outcome in future uh, with those resilience actions. Uh, for example, one resilience action could be invest in a dam building, uh, invest in desalination plant. That can take ages. I mean, it can take five, six years to complete, but you can already model it uh, to see the outcomes. Like Wendy said, what are the potential outcomes that, that, that might, uh, might be available through these actions? And you could assess your action with respect to those indicators, those uh, what you call the characteristics. So step one, two, and three are the sequential step, whereas step four is an evaluation. It fits into step one. Your selection of boundary may be wrong. You may not have all the stakeholders uh, included in the system analysis. You may have different strategy. I mean, you might have chosen to persist, which is not no longer feasible if there is no water left kind of thing. So you evaluate the, the, the whole process. So this is a wrap in a nutshell. So I, I said earlier, there are six characteristics that we identify in this framework. These are robustness, redundancy, flexibility, integration, inclusiveness, just and equitability. Uh, all these characteristics can be applied to three different components of the system. Uh, when we say three different components of the system, one is uh, socioeconomic. We define socioeconomic component as one component. Uh, the second component is institutional component of the system. The third one is biophysical, which would be around dams, canals, infrastructure, all those kind of supply chains, all those things. So all those three system components could have all these six characteristics. So the measurement of your resilience can be done with respect to these characteristics using the indicators developed uh, in this framework. So these indicators I highlighted a bit earlier uh, can be organized at different levels of assessment. You could have very high level of assessment. So you have tier one indicators. You could have very refined, more granular assessment that could be tier two assessment. You could only apply that uh, at institutional level, for example. Uh, and then within institutional level, you could have different uh, components within institutional level. And using those indicators, we can have benchmark assessment where we stand right now, and we can have the, the uh, assessment with, with resilience action. So the, the assessment can be done in two stages, benchmark stage and validation stage. Benchmark, I said earlier, is the current state of resilience. Uh, you, you, it would, the, the framework would provide you uh, resilience score, uh, and then with resilience section, you would get a second uh, level of resilience score, and you compare, evaluate, range, and repeat. So I'll give you one example, quick example of how we apply these indicators. For example, uh, I select system component institutional. Uh, within institutional, you could see number of system sub component. You would be surprised to see that I mean, there are regulation three times, governance number of times. Uh, what do we mean by uh, all these system sub component? That is. Under regulation, you might have different levels of tier two indicator. Uh, regulation, with respect to regulation, you could be thinking about uh, what is the level of regulatory compliance in the system? What is the maturity of legal and policy framework? So a different aspect of regulation uh, has a different uh, indicator, tier two indicator. And uh, once you measure them, uh, we, we use traffic light system for the time being because uh, the assessment could be quantitative and qualitative. Uh, for the comprehensive assessment, we provide a traffic light system. If it is red, you uh, have to take certain action. You are in red zone, it's a danger zone, or green is kind of, as, as per traffic light, it's a, it's, it's a good sign. Amber is some something uh, yellow, uh, as you say, uh, is something that you, you should be very cautious about that. Uh, so you might find these indicators uh, with respect to this particular system component. Some of them are performing well, excellent, for example, practicality and applicability of the legal and policy framework, whereas uh, the financial ability is very low, others are medium. So you might be fine right now with respect to number of uh, uh, indicators, but may not be uh, good enough for, for the future. So what do you want to do uh, next is to focus on those medium ones and the low ones and then try to improve them with resilience action. For example, uh, if institutional system component with respect to governance has very low uh, resilience uh, in score, then we can have number of resilience action like uh, Wendy suggested earlier, you could have different mm -hmm. activities, list of activities, and that could provide, uh, that could help improve the score or maybe medium one, you provide training and cross-learning opportunities. So there are solutions, potential resilience action. 
And once you apply them, uh, you would see that number of uh, the resilience uh, score would change from medium to high, but still there is one that is low to low and one that is medium to medium. Uh, so you might want to focus them. For example, uh, all those green, no further consideration needed, revisit on a regular basis because the, con con basis because the context might change. Uh, or uh, where actions are ineffective in the middle three, three indicators, you need to consider developing new strategies or new actions or revisit your, your strategy. No further consideration needed for the high, the last two one. So this is just a sample of uh, institutional component for one particular uh, resilience characteristics. All those six characteristics are examined for all these three system component and number of system sub components using hundreds of resilience indicators. And you might be able to select the ones that you use a lot in your practice or what which are readily available or some which you think are important to you. So this is the final slide. Uh, I want to go back to the, the React framework one more time and try to see how React can support climate resilient WASP framework. The various in, uh, steps in this climate resilience WASP framework are aligned aligning perfectly with the various systems in the app. I'll show you how. If you know the, 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 the framework, uh, step one is assessment of climate risk, which is about step one in the app, which is identify driver shocks and stresses. What are the risks? What are the, the shocks that would change? What are the challenges? So that's the visualization of the system. And step two is about impact of risk on OWASP. So this is your state. What are the impact of these challenges now? How does it reflect on the on the day-to-day -day business. So that's number two is about understanding the current state of resilience. Whereas three is preparedness and ad adaptation. Uh, I only see adaptation and preparedness. It doesn't talk about transformation and, and persistence strategy, but uh, it aligns very well with the step two of the RAF here. And step four, which is solutions and implementation in the climate resilient wars is about develop resiliency strategy. So these are how you cut your cake. You can cut it kind of diagonally, you can cut it vertically, you can cut the way you like it, but more or less we have most of the things here. What RAP provides additionally is uh, not only testing and monitoring and reporting and disclosure, but the, the middle zone, the, the, the gray, this pink shaded region where uh, it helps you to identify the key resilience characteristics to, to make a logical system approach identify system component and resilience indicators, which are suitable to measure this strength and weakness of these characteristics, and a comprehensive resilience strategy, which is not only adaptation, but also persistence and um, transformation. So I think there, there is a great value of aligning this and then having some pilots and then understanding how it can be applied in practice together uh, in future. So I think that's wrap in a nutshell. And if you want to download the, the framework, it's here. And then the website is there. Uh, you can scan it. The presentation will be available for you to, to scan it and ask any questions now. Thank you.